All right, guys, today we've got a 2015 Range Rover in here. The client is complaining of a airbag system fault, light on the dash. Um, we've already got this car diagnosed, but I wanted to give you all a glimpse of how I proceeded in my diagnosis with this car. So let's get into it. So we've got the Zeus hooked up in here. Um, we're doing a full system code scan right now. We've also got a battery maintainer hooked up. Very important, especially when you're dealing with these Europeans. Um, we've got the Zeus doing its thing. We do have our airbag faults up here. <clears throat> we can see, whoop, and it just saved that scan, which is nice because we attached that to the ticket for the client as well. Um, so we've got some airbag fault codes, which is their concern. And let's scroll down through here. Everybody else looks pretty happy. A windshield misting sensor. All right, nothing else looking like it's relating to an airbag system at all. So here's our focus point here. Um, from here, I'm gonna go and look at some airbag data. So we're gonna go back, go into the airbag module, and let's take a look at some of the data here. As for some of you may know, a lot, a lot of airbag systems rely a lot on resistance, especially the airbags themselves. The module's looking at resistance. Um, right off the bat, you see how all these numbers are around the two and a half to three ohm area. We've got two that are way, way different than the rest. So I'm gonna keep that in the back of my mind. Looking down through here, we've got a seat track sensor on the passenger seat is reading forward. The passenger seat is in the rearward most position right now. The driver's seat's in the rearward most position as well. So <clears throat> that sensor's not working either, which the fault codes kind of indicated that as well in their definition. Those are the two things that kind of stand out to me. Um, what I'm going to do at this point is go look up those codes because I definitely don't deal with airbag fault codes on a daily basis. Um, so I'm going to go look up the code definition, see what the code set criteria is, learn a little bit more about uh, why that code could be set, and uh, see which way we're going to go with this diag. We've got the code scan attached to the ticket. Um, didn't go through that process with you. It can be a little lengthy depending on the size of the file. We've got it saved here. So as you can see, here's our airbag fault codes. This is what the client's concern is. This is gonna be our focal point. So let's just start with this first code and let's go to all data and just get some information on that code. Find out why it does what it does. I've already typed it in here. So we got some warnings. Obviously don't blow an airbag up in your face. Be careful. So we come down here, we've got the DTC number We've got the description, possible causes. We see some open circuit, high resistance, um, connector damage. Reading through this, if you pay attention here, like we saw on that data, it's saying that that resistance should be between 1.7 ohms and 3.28 ohms. And that is for the control number seven resistance which was, I took a picture of this too, so we can refer back to it, which when we were looking at that data, we got the deployment control seven resistance is at 65 ohms. So we've definitely got an issue there. Um, before I go too far ahead of myself and chasing just this one code, I wanna get a, a whole picture of what's going on. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy and paste this other fault code over into all data so that we can see what makes it tick as well. And I double typed it. Why does that keep showing up? Come on. Always. Oh, I see it doesn't have the dash in there. Get out of the way. And sometimes these things want it to be very specific, so. All right. All data is 
being weird. All right, well, it does not want to work here. <laughs> I've got all data open in multiple spots, so it might be not liking that. Let's manually type that code in. The wonderful world of computers, things we have to deal with on a day-to-day -day basis. All right, so we've got Bravo 00 Charlie 5-13. And there's our code. So now it likes it. <laughs> Whatever. All right, so now here's our other fault code that we're dealing with. This is the seat track. The one we were dealing with before was the airbag module that's actually in the seat. So we look down through here, passenger seat track, possible causes, position sensor circuit, open circuit or high resistance. Again, similar possible causes. So refer to the wiring diagram, looking for high resistance issues. So they kind of sound like they have a very similar code set criteria, criteria, and they're both, both of these components are in the passenger seat. So I want to go and take a look at a wiring diagram. Um, here's our passenger seat position sensor. And if we look here, we're going through connector C33. And then you got a D1, which is one side, D2 is the other side of that connector. So let's kind of look around, see if we can find that passenger airbag module. Passenger side airbag, outer edge of passenger seat back. So it's a curtain airbag and it passes through the same connector. So from there, at this point, uh, my next step would be to find that connector because both of these problem areas, both of these problem faults go through a common location. So I want to start with a visual inspection on that connector. Uh, we could have a multitude of different problems. So let's go back to the car. Let's find that connector and see what it looks like. Now I have, like I said, we've already diagnosed this car. So I do already have the seat um unbolted here so we can tip it back and get to the connectors i may have to take the camera from you there cameraman to show them this so what i did in this case i actually was able to see this before i disconnected the seat but i could not get my hands in there as you can see i looked underneath the seat and i could see that connector there just hanging um, and then you can see there's its uh, companion there. And if we compare the wiring colors there to the wiring diagram, that is our C33 connector. So the next question I started asking myself is why is this connector off? This car has previously been at a body shop. So potentially someone left it loose or did not reconnect it. And I also noticed that there is a harness retainer here that the tape has fallen off of on this harness. So one of two things have occurred. Either this harness got tugged on because it's not retained properly and it pulled that connector apart or it just was left unplugged. Um, when you plug this connector in, it does, it does retain well. Um, I don't see any reason to replace the connector itself. So Let's go see if this car's fixed now. And as we know, on airbag systems, every time the key is cycled, that module is running resistance tests on all of the airbags, all of the important sensors it needs to see. So, let's fire it up real quick. We haven't cleared codes or anything. We just, just now connected that connector. The light's on, it's doing a system check, seeing if everybody's happy, and the light's out. That tells me that right now, the airbag system is happy with all of its resistance values. So that being said, we would assume that we have fixed it at this point. Let's go back into that airbag module and look at that data again. 
So previously we had the number seven resistance value was at around 65 ohms. And you can see now the control seven, we're at 2.35 ohms. Not real sure what control 19 is. It may be an airbag that this vehicle is not equipped with, but it's still showing up in the data PID. If it were an issue, we would still have a, a light on or there would be a fault code for it. And we got our passenger seat track sensor is reading rearward. So no parts needed, the car's fixed. So don't discredit visual inspections. They are very important. Let the data guide you. Um, I'm not super familiar with airbags. It's not something I deal with on a daily basis, but a few key things to look at in this one. Number one is the code definition, looking it up on all data or Moto logic or source to understand why the module has set that particular fault code. It gives you an idea, especially if it's something that you don't deal with on a daily basis. Obviously, if it's a PO420 catalyst code or something like that, it's something we see regularly. We know why they set airbag systems. I always look that up um, and looking at all the codes, getting the whole, getting the whole story before you proceed it, that may send you a direction you don't need to go down. Once you get all the, all the parts of the story, you can start going after it and looking at a wiring diagram. It pretty much painted that picture for us. All right, guys, hope you liked the video. Um, if you've got any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them below. Give the, uh, give the video a like, subscribe to the channel. All of our content is free. Don't forget to hit the bell notification so you can get notified of our future videos. And we'll see you on the next one.